Welcome to this lesson on balancing chemical equations. The question is, what is the difference between a coefficient and a subscript in a chemical reaction? Okay, to start off, we're gonna talk about the law of conservation. I alluded to this in the last video on the types of chemical reactions, but in order to balance our chemical equations, we can only adjust coefficients. And the reason we need to balance co uh, chemical equations is because they need to follow the law of conservation. We have to have the same number of atoms on both sides of our uh, chemical equation, but those atoms must also maintain their identity when they are rearranging their bonds. So in this case, um, when we put coefficients in front of our substances in chemical equations, we are changing the amount of the substance or we're changing the number of molecules or later the number of moles of the substances in the chemical equation or reaction, but we're not actually changing the chemical itself, just the amount. So in the law of conservation, we um, are kind of instructed that we can't change a chemical formula. We cannot take H2O and convert it into H2O2 for the sake of balancing chemical equations, because that means that water is magically being converted into um, hydrogen peroxide. That's not really, I mean, the reaction may call for that, but in this case, um, if you're doing it for the sake of balancing the chemical equation, you're really breaking the equation. Um, so you're really just changing what the reaction is representing instead of changing the amount of stuff that's in the reaction. Think of it like doubling a recipe. You wouldn't just swap out um, butter for milk when you are making something, but you can change the amount of butter or the amount of milk when you double a recipe, let's say. So this synthesis reaction, as it is written, is not a good reaction because we have an oxygen atom that is destroyed. We started out with two hydrogens and two oxygens, but by the end of the reaction, we lost one of those oxygens. So this is my strategy for how to balance chemical equations, and I find that it's actually really easy. So what we're gonna do is on that yield arrow, we're gonna write two vertical lines on either side to separate the reactants from the products, and then in between those two lines, you're gonna list all of the elements that are involved in the chemical reaction. Kind of an advanced tactic here is if you have a polyatomic ion that is not decomposed in the process of your chemical reaction, you can hold that entire poly together when you list all of your elements in between those um, vertical lines. So we're gonna look at the chemical reaction as a before and after, and we're gonna count how many atoms we have on each side of the chemical equation. We're gonna list that um, on the sides of the vertical lines. Um, so it'll be number of atoms, elements, number of atoms, kind of like that. And then we are going to alter our coefficients using multiplication when um, we're counting because a coefficient, remember, multiplies everything in the chemical formula. You'll see what I mean in a second. So we started out with our chemical equation, H2 plus O2 yields H2O. And I have my vertical lines and I've listed my elements here. I've counted that I have two hydrogens on my reactant side and two oxygens on my reactant side. And initially I had two hydrogens on the product side and only one oxygen on the product side. So I fixed that by putting a two out in front of the water. When I do that, everything that comes after is multiplied by two. So now I, instead of having two hydrogens, I have four. And instead of having one oxygen, I have two. Um, but still I'm not balanced because this um, product side has more hydrogens than the reactant side. So now I'll have to make some adjustments to the reactants in order to get them balanced. So if I put a two out in front of the hydrogen, now I have four hydrogens on each side and two oxygens on each side of my chemical equation. Anytime there is no coefficient written, it really implies that there's an imaginary one, a lot like uh, coefficients in math. X and 1X are really the same thing. So this is the strategy that you will use to balance chemical equations. In my next video, I'm going to do some practice questions, so make sure to check that out now that you've learned the process. Please leave any questions you have in the comment section below the video. Can't wait to see you there. Subscribe so you don't miss it. Bye.